All right, you're good. What's up, guys? YouTubers. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, what's up? Uh, YouTubees. YouTubees. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're back at the, what do we call this? The, the hub? Oh, the Mayflower no. hub. <laughs> we haven't hung up our uh Yeah, you need to get on sign. that. Let's get on that. What else? You can leave it open, dude. Oh, no one's gonna the kids aren't here. No, they're gonna get here, but Jamie said that she'll just come sit right there, but I think it leaves it a little bit cooler. Guys, if you're watching, if you're from out of town, it's about seven hundred degrees in Texas and they're trying to tell us to turn off our ACs. So if you're from that company that have you ever watched this, <laughs> I got two words for you. Just kidding. Well, what <laughs> oh, they I used know. to say is suck it. Like the DX, the generation X. What I think is so funny is that like how many memes and stuff you're seeing about and every I have not met one person that's it. like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna no. change it. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, you guys figure it out. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. have our AC. You figure it out. And I think if they would have kept us in the loop of why this is happening, it's just like a leader saying, Hey, I need you to go do this. No, I'm not gonna go do that. That's stupid. Well, what I what I learned when this happened in February, before was it February, January, when we had the freeze, is that you can't really harness energy for like you have to create it and use it. Create yeah. it and use it. And so that's the issue, is that if you use it's it's a balance. Yeah, I heard all the people yeah. have their cars plugged in. Mm -hmm. uh, like me and John were reading that thing you know, like, Oh my god, oh, you know. No. no. Yep. I swear to you, that's what John no. they were reading it. Not happening. Mm -hmm. Not, not unplugging my car. I mean, I don't have an electric car, but if I did, I would not be unplugging my car. All right. All right, let's get this going so we can wrap this up and get back in the AC. The AC should, AC. AC. AC should be cutting on here in a second. I think it's, it, yeah, we need to make sure that happens. Episode 24. Hang on. Let's chuck it. Hmm. Anything else I need to tell YouTubers? Uh, YouTubees? So, so. Did we tell people about the last uh, milestone we hit with the podcast? Did we? What is it? It's Yana. I got an iPad. You did? I did. Do you love it? Yes. It's it's awesome. over here. With a pencil and everything, I have used Procreate. It's amazing. It's um Well, uh, Sky, has used, to get me to... Sky has used Procreate more than I have. That's what but, I and, uh, but you I, I want you to know, I just want to send you things I have designed in like, Canva, even. I do that to him all the time. Because I'm like, do you What's see this? this? <laughs> it's magic! Yeah. All right, we got you started. Okay, let's go. Oh, I we just passed 2,000 bucks with us. Yeah, yeah, we're at 20. We're about to hit 22, yeah. which is crazy. All right. <laughs> Ready? Three. Three. Oh, Sorry. yeah. We need to just lower. I'll tell Jamie to lower. Uh, or maybe, yeah, I'll have him up. All right, guys, we got to Let's go. You're the one who hits the start button. Three. This is at zero, and it's at fifty-two percent now. Two. Okay, sorry. One. <laughs> oh. Ready. I told. Was that green apple? I totally smell green apple. Yeah. It was. Yes. Okay. okay. I can totally smell it. What's up, guys? It's Mario from the Made for More Consulting Podcast, and uh, we're back here in Leander, Austin area, recording our podcast. Excited tonight because we get to jump into a new book called How to Lead When You're Not in Charge. And we'll be discussing three top things about influence, identity, and ambition in the first section. But, uh, Dina, welcome back. I am so back? glad to be back. I loved the interview with Jay. He is one of my favorite people to listen <laughs> yeah. to. Um, and I even told you, like, so many times, I know Jay, but I don't really know him. Yes. And listening to his interview, I I mean, I wanted to be like, Jay, can I, can we, like, talk? Because I have a lot of questions. There's been you. a lot of people tell me that. Yeah, so I, I mean, I do. I, I kind of feel like maybe I should be, like, his friend. Like, we should, you know, Maybe we can get him back FaceTime. on the podcast. We should FaceTime him one day and let me, like, ask him all the questions I want to ask him. We'll see. You know, because your style of interview and my style of interview, totally different. you're like, Who's your favorite baseball player? I'm like, I don't care. No, like, I need to know, that. how did you feel in this moment? No, he doesn't really talk, uh, oh, talk about Oh, whatever. I don't care. You like it or not, I'm asking the hard um, questions. But I'm really excited about this book. Yeah. Really excited about this uh, book. Yeah, 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 the new book. Uh, what else? Tatiana, we crossed 2,200. Yeah, downloads. downloads. Which movie, is amazing. Movie, Sorry. Right yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, we'll discuss this at the end. But guys, if you haven't listened, 
make sure you go back and listen, obviously, to episode one because it tells you a little about who we are. If this is your first podcast that you're listening to, and really the last interview um, has just taken off with Jay. It took up two because he can't stop talking. So, um, but yeah, tonight, Aditi, what else do you have to say about, uh, I mean, the book? I think one of the things I want to, before we start, get a new book. I think we're going to cover a lot of books on this podcast. I mean, we've covered, covered military, we've covered, you know, personality, leadership, and then this is a leadership book, but it has like a spiritual connotation to it, right? It does. And, and I'm you know, not a fan of, of like, um, making people listen to somebody. Yeah, right. church, in quotations. Church. Yeah. Yes. I'm, as far as, the, I guess the principles are good. What, what were you so saying? Say, so I read this book in probably three or four years ago when I wasn't really leading anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't working, I was staying at home. Um, and so, but I just, something told me, pick up this book, I read this book, and it, it had so many like things that I identified with. And so it was very interesting to then go and read it now when I'm in a completely different place in my mm -hmm. life. And this, I mean, honestly, it is probably in the first like three chapters, I can't tell you how much stuff I stopped to underline. It just, it, I kept just drawing like things out. This, he is so good at like putting into words yeah. things that I have felt or things that I've seen <laughs> or things that people have talked to me about. And I'm just yeah. like, yes, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but I do agree with like the spirituality part of it. I did not remember this much spirituality in it. But I'm going to say, whether you are a believer or not, you can get so much from this book. Yeah, and I think keeping your, as a leader, keep your mind open to different things that you can Absolutely. Learn from. Absolutely. So. Because there is a lot of, like, what do they say? Nuggets of truth. I hate that word. I know you just like said it. God, I hate that word. Nuggets of truth coming at you. Um, yeah, and then in chapter two, there's something, like you said, he, he talks about something that just um, is challenging that I tend to agree with that yeah. a lot so I'm all, let's go I, <clears throat> yeah jumping into it man i can't talk uh how to lead when you're not in charge first section is called understanding our challenge so chapter one the oddity of leadership so this church this this word this chapter is all about one word uh, and its influence so the oddity of leadership and the word that i came away with in this chapter is called influence um so he opens a book uh, talking about all of us wanting to lead at some point all of us wanting to be a leader uh, so even as a young kid, he talks about us wanting to be leaders. So do you remember a time in your life, Dina, your earliest memory of leadership, like that you wanted to be put in leadership or maybe at school? I, I specifically remember, but for me, but for you, like your first area of leadership that they put you in. But, you know, I have so many memories of like being in charge at school, being selected to go and pick up the attendance or like just do different things that I didn't realize that that's what that was mm -hmm. and that was leadership. But one of the very first times I remember thinking, oh, this is leadership is when I had some friends that were planning a surprise party for their parents. And I was probably in like third or fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they could not figure out how to plan a party I was like, okay, let me just tell you what to do. And they That's were like, awesome. what? And I was like, yeah, you're going to do this. And very basic things at a kid level. We're yeah. going to make some decorations. We're going to get some invitations. And that was the first time I was like, oh, wait, I'm in charge. And I kind of like this. Yeah. You know, it was definitely like, I can tell you it was summertime. I mean, I can tell you like the whole thing, <laughs> how, how much, but that's probably like my first taste of like. That's awesome. Yes. But we remember that. And we all want to be in that. And like, for me, I remember being the milk crate person. Like you always want oh, to yes. get the milk. And yes. Then, uh, go get the milk, come back, be at the front of the line, yes. whatever they call it. I was it. always teacher's pet. Yes. I, I, I wasn't. I uh, was. Saying the pledge. Like that was a good, a big thing, unless you forgot the words, because you were nervous. And then I think all of us at some point again. Want, he he hits on this is that you always want to. We all it's built in us to lead, want to be a, be a part of something where we can lead at some point. And so, um, yeah, I think in the end we want to be recognized, and we want to be recognized. And in that we carry influence, and that's the word that again that we're talking about is when you're recognized, when you're out front doing something you're carrying lead, uh, influence and it's leadership. And so uh, I believe that it never leaves us that we want to be recognized. And I think you always say that every one of us is a leader, right? 
And so we all carry influence around someone at some point. And I think that it never leaves that we carry influence, but it, get, it can get distorted. It can get distorted and been out of shape pretty quick if we're not careful and if we're not, uh, if we don't keep an eye on our, on our influence. Well, I think there's a big difference between like a leader and being bossy. And I mm -hmm. think that so many times in mm -hmm. that, when you're a kid or even when you're a young leader, you mm -hmm. think that just telling people what to do is being a leader yeah. because people are like, oh, well, like, like that when I was yeah. in fifth grade and I was telling them what to do, where really I was probably being pretty bossy, but that's what they were looking for. They were looking for somebody to tell them yeah. what to do. So as you get older though, if you don't rein in the boss, you have to, yeah, yes. exactly. You but can... there's some people that don't and they end up being bullies the rest of their life and yes. no one's following them. Yes. And I think that there's a transition between even being like a boss and being a leader. Yeah. And I do think there are several people that don't make that transition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's right. why they usually stay stuck in their jobs. And those are the people that I'm guessing that people have a harder time following. Yeah, and he talks about that. If you have to pull the authority card, then you're in trouble. You oh, should I never love, have to I pull the authority example. card because of the fact that that's not influence. And so just so everybody knows, for Made For More, what we usually tend to say is it's influence or manipulation. That's it. Leadership is going to be influence or manipulation. So what does that mean? So if you're influencing people, that's for the greater good of all the team. And the leader is at the bottom pushing everybody up to go, hey, we're trying to get somewhere. Manipulation is the leader at the top going, how do I get you to go do this for me so that I can benefit from it? And I think you're right. As a, the bossy people at some point, if they don't see themselves in charge, which he talks a lot about in the first chapter, which is we struggle to be in charge. And if you pull that boss card and you're getting bossy, you begin to manipulate people because you want what you want. And if you're not in charge early, you probably try to leave and go do something to try to get in charge. And you'll do whatever it takes to be the boss because you got a taste of being bossy. When I think influence goes back to, I, if I'm influencing you, I want you to do it for you. I yep. want you to see the why. I want you to understand mm -hmm. what, what the benefit is for your growth or for your opportunity. Even if it's something for the whole country, I want you to have the country. We're, we are we are being president here. <laughs> the whole company. Yes. I want you to have buy-in to influence you to do yeah. that, not just tell you do this. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to be, you know, some, for me. Yeah. And so if you're at work, or you're at home, wherever, remember that I think just the whole being bossy is it should be a, that should be a red flag for us and go, hey, this is where I'm struggling. I need to influence, not manipulate. I need to try to stop getting them to do something for me that benefits me. I need to help them understand how it's gonna benefit them and really do my part, take ownership on how I can get them better. Well, and if you lead a team, it's definitely something to stop and ask yourself. Yeah, is, you're right. What, what do I use to, to get my team to do what they're supposed to do? Yeah. Do I use influence or do I use manipulation? And I know that people don't like that word manipulation, but like but we said, it it's one or the other. Yep, that's what it is. Uh, so he says a statement, it's pretty cool. It says, life teaches us that authority to lead and the opportunity to lead are a package deal. We think they go hand in hand like cranberry sauce and turkey. When we're given the authority to lead, a title, a uniform, a corner office, then and only then will we have the opportunity to lead. But that's not, that's just not true. So meaning, I think some of us have that picture of the corner office. If I just get that badge, if I just get that title, that's when I'm a leader. That's, that's, that's so, so backwards because you're leading. It's what you say all the time. Everyone is a leader. So mm -hmm. you're leading someone every single day. You're influencing someone every single day. Um, and you may not know it. And so, uh, another key statement about influence was this, uh, I believe this is what he says. So the lie we believe is that we just wait until we're, we're the leaders. We're in the leader seat before we can have this kind of influence. So he's talking about being a manager and going, man, if I can just make it to that, then that's when I'm the big leader. That's when I get the leadership title. No, you're a leader where you're at right now, whether you're a salesperson, whether you're just a stock person, you're leading somewhere, you're influencing someone by the way you work. What I like, he says, I have drifted towards an unhealthy mindset, feeling like a victim whose ideas weren't valued or understood within a larger organization. I felt inhibited and constrained like a tamed lion losing my ambition to lead. But what he says is, I soon learned I was wrong. It turns out the cage does not even exist. Yeah, and I, when I read that statement, I thought back to the episode where we did, um, it was our very first 
um, like frequently asked questions or Q and A yeah. that we did. And I remembered there were several people who just felt like I have this micromanager boss or what yeah. do I do? I'm not, I'm not being able, I'm not being allowed to lead where I am. And I thought that's it. We, you know, when you, once you get in there, you feel like there's this cage and that you're in this, this cage and you have this fixed mindset mm -hmm. where I'm not being, I'm not allowed, not being allowed to lead. And what he's saying is that cage doesn't even exist because you can always lead where you are. Yeah, you're right. Um, and that was episode 12. If you want to go back and listen to the first Q and A uh, that Adina's talking about, and that's good. And so at the end, I oh, know not at the end, one of the other things I wrote down was he says, but if you fail to cultivate influence when you're not in charge, so he's saying right now, if you're not the leader, if you're just, again, if you're just one of the team players, right? But if you fail to cultivate influence when you're not in charge, you will have no influence to leverage when you are. So once you make it there, you're gonna have a tough time leveraging what, you know, uh, influence you have because you may have stepped over people, uh, you may have jumped somewhere over and maybe gone around someone else's back to become, to get this title. So where you're at right now, practice and cultivate that leadership and influence because when you make it there, all those people are gonna go, hey, he or she deserves it because he worked for it or she worked for it. I like in this chapter, he also points out that leaders do not sit back and point fingers. It's like, he it, he's talking about ownership. You know, how yeah. you have to take ownership of leading where you are because you have to lead where you are needed mm -hmm. regardless if you have the authority if you have the title if you have the corner office yep. you know as a leader you're called to lead right where you are which is exactly what we always say yeah so influence is honestly just taking ownership of where you're at and going i have to take ownership of where i'm at um man i saw an interesting thing of influence today that i'm going to use so it, and you know i'm going to be teaching for four weeks um, at a church and uh, I'm trying to teach practical things. Um, and I guess if they listen to this, they're gonna um, hear one of the examples, but today, so here's influence. Number one soccer player in the world, Cristiano Ronaldo sits down, or he did this Monday, he sits down in a press conference and they have Coke bottles, you know, the, the, the sponsors. He takes the two Coke bottles puts him over to the side and he, he holds up his water bottle and he says, Awa, and he puts it down. In 30 seconds, Coca-Cola lost four, $4 billion. Wow. $4 billion because he took the Cokes and placed them over there. The same thing happens when Elon Musk says certain things and people go buy certain things. The influence of one man or one woman's uh, just words. But again, they didn't just earn, they didn't just get up there and say, hey, I'm Cristiano Ronaldo and I'm gonna say this about Coke. And no, people follow them because of the work that they put in and what they stand for and what they do. So influence takes work. And when you get to where you're going, your influence is gonna pay off. Absolutely, I love too that he also talks about how if you're in that position where you feel like you don't have any influence or any authority that you have to figure out and establish where do I have authority? You know, because I think sometimes we focus on what we don't have, yeah. that we actually do have the authority and we have just have to accept the authority that we do have because people confuse authority with responsibility. You may not yeah. have all the responsibilities mm -hmm. that you feel like that yeah. you should be doing, but you have the authority, you yeah. have the influence. Exactly. And I think that's, you just have to remember that it doesn't matter where you're at, you are having an influence in someone's life, whether it's at home. Work. For sure. And I went back and like I said a few minutes ago, I think you kind of have to stop and ask yourself, mm -hmm. you know, where do I need to accept authority? Yep. You know, where is it that I am leading like a boss and not a leader? This is a great time for some self-reflection and really making sure that you're on the right path as a leader and that you have a clear vision for the kind of leader that you want to be. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you work. Like, or, yeah, you're, like you're saying, your level on the totem pole, it doesn't matter. Are you taking ownership of where you're at? So exactly. moral of the story. Don't waste your influence. Don't waste it. So what do you think? You ready to move on to chapter Let's two? Let's do. So chapter one was all about influence. Chapter two is called the identity crisis. So we started with influence, but the next chapter is all about, again, identity and how it lends a hand in how we lead. And again, I forget about identity and how much of it connects to the way we are and we're built and the way we lead. Um, if you're watching, there's a gnat or a mosquito that I keep swinging at it in here. It's so. Tough. 
one, it's not humorous. Yeah, one of the things that he says in here that has a huge effect on how we lead as far as identity, he says this, our behaviors flow from our identities. So before we spend any energy on what we do as leaders, we really need to spend some time on who we are as leaders, especially when we are not the ones in charge. So you and I, everyone that is in the Made For More community remembers that we keep saying, it's not what you do, it's who you are. Who you are regardless of where you go. So if you're not a leader right now, if you don't think you're a leader, one, you have influence. Two, focus on who you are because when you become that leader, that's when who you are is gonna shine the most. Again, I feel like this book is so good for self-reflective. He also says the way you see yourself is determined by your life and your decisions you make as a leader. I mean, it, that's yeah, it. Totally, you that's know it. who you are. Yes, because if you, I, I put this down, you know, I believe that I have to accept who I am and believe in who I am so that other people can feed off of that and it's confidence or whatever. But if, if Mario believes in who he is, people can see that and I can go, I'm in that 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 spot that I need to be in where I'm leading best and other people can see that and they go, okay, how do I do that? And it's easier for me to talk from that spot rather than fake who I am. Um, and so I think, um, yeah. I think that some, I've heard it like leading in your sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. You know, leading yeah. it in your, in the zone. In your zone. You know? But yeah. I also think that, you know, you have to think about if you're not leading well, if you're doing some self-reflection and mm -hmm. you're like, hey, maybe I am being a very passive leader. Maybe I'm not leading, not using the authority. I'm not with my, I'm not using, you know, my identity. I'm not, yeah. you know, I don't know who yeah. I am as a leader. I would really ask yourself, you know, what are, where are you passively leading? Yeah. And, and how is that working for you? Yeah. And I think for me, and I think you guys know this, I know my wife, Sierra, Etiana, and then you, and just knowing that for me, the past three years, I was not somebody who engaged in conflict. I just go, whatever, I'm just gonna make it happen. But for me, it's not conflict. It's just going, okay, I gotta take ownership on my part, but we're gonna get it done. And if we don't, yeah, and it, it's clarifying things, but also going, there's a way to get through things without being direct and hurting someone. I can be indirect while influencing them and helping them get where they need to be. But I think for me, it's more going, I'm direct with where, who I need to be. And I can't steer away from that because if I do that, I'm not, I'm, I have a, I have a false identity. It's like, a, like he talks about fake IDs. Well, you have to know how you see yourself as yep. a leader. How do you see yourself and how do others see you yes. as a leader? You have to know who you are and how do, how do you see yourself? So if you're listening to this, like you said, self-reflection right now would be to go, I need to set 30 to 45 minutes aside, put the phone away. Where am I? Where do I have a lack of self-confidence that is affecting the way I show up to work or lead or produce? And I right. think you what? gotta you gotta zero in on those. And one question he asks is who like who are you spending your time with? Who you know, who are the people Man, that's around a you great one. right now yes. that are affecting you and the way that you see yourself? Who is in your corner? Who shouldn't be in your corner? Who is the loudest voice speaking in your life? Who should be the loudest voice in your life? I mean, it goes on and yeah, on. And, yeah. It's so true. I just, I feel like that's one of these, who, you have self-reflection time. Who are you spending your time with? Who is influencing you as a leader? Who's helping you grow in that? Who's challenging you? Yeah, and and he, I love that he says it's like mixing audio on a soundboard. If you, if you don't, or yeah, you have headphones on and you wanna hear just the vocals, you can turn down all the, all the sound except the vocals. Well, if you're trying to mix the vocals in and you have too much guitar, you turn, he's saying the same thing about our lives. If something is too loud, turn it out. But the only person that can turn it off is you. Is you. So take some time to reflect on who you are and figure out how that's affecting what you do. Um, one of the things he says is we have to find balance between authentic, authentically admitting our weaknesses and excusing our weaknesses. Too many young leaders use the phrases like this, and I can't stand this, is that's just who I am or they just need to know that's how I've always been to excuse areas of potential growth. To me, I see that as areas of growth. And I think where I struggle as a leader is I tend to jump on that person to go, that's a load of crap rather than go, tell me how, why, tell me why you would even say that in a positive manner. Because to me, that just screams no ownership and it screams that I'm going to stay this way. And it screams. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. done all I can. I'm just not going to do anything different. Yeah. Well, and I'm well. And I think what's hard for me is that what that says to me is I'm more important. 
it's, yeah, than, it's ego. than this team yeah. or I'm more important than you. Or, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to be on a team with somebody who just says, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this is just how I am. And when I hear that, that's why I'm saying right now, hearing that, I got to tell people, if you've ever used that, I've used that, is the, the grace that I got to extend is to go, if that's you, you have the opportunity to change that right now. Why do you want to change it? Because you're only going to go as far as those excuses. Mm -hmm. And if you're saying this is all I have, then, I'm, then think about this. If you're using these excuses that this is the way I've always been, or that's just who I am, if you're using those excuses, and here's what I'm gonna tell you, a year from now, you're gonna be in the same boat. Two years from now, imagine being no further than where you are right now. Well, I think too, like for me, I'm really big on like growth and wanting to be the best version mm -hmm. of myself. And if I, you know, one one thing everyone in this room knows about me is details are not my, my thing. Etiana's laughing because she knows it's true. I'm like, what do you mean this detail you're going to think yeah. about? But at the same time, I'm like, I, I know that's a weakness, but I strive. Like, I'm like, okay, like if I, if you point out some details I need to figure out for next time, I'll do that, yeah. you know, because that is, I want to be the best that I can be. And I want to be sure that I'm growing in every area yeah. that I need, you know, that I need to be growing in. One of the things he says in here that I really like is he says, whether I'm in charge or not, I want to be ruthlessly committed to doing what is best to help others, whether it helps me move toward a promotion or not. Love that. that. I love, like, I'm just going to do a really good job for every, for this company and mm -hmm. for everyone else, whether it moves me ahead in life or in this yep. business that whatever yeah that that to me is like true leadership yeah. so if you are a let's say you're not a, let's say you're not a high on the payroll and you have that attitude and you help someone that one of your peers they're going to remember you more than remember their boss because you just help them now if you're the boss and you have that kind of attitude they're never going to leave and you're never going to have turnover so if you're listening to this and you go how do, how do i prevent turnover have a servant leadership mm -hmm. as in it doesn't have to be spiritual but you got to go how do i serve other people so that they can serve the company and we can get better when he goes back to identity in this and how you know your ability to be that kind of leader you have to be squarely rooted in your identity you have to know who you are and you have to be mm -hmm. really confident to say i am just going to help you no matter what that does for me yeah. because that is not a typical attitude yeah. especially in a corporate you know totally agree. but that's working on you again you're going this is who i want to be not what i want to do absolutely um he says the best leaders may or may not have all the authority they have need or want but the their security is what in their identity of their identity so they're secure in their identity it doesn't matter about the position it doesn't matter about the authority they're secure in who they are and those people will bring more people around them because they're secure in who they are um I know one of the things I want to stop and say at the end that we forget to say sometimes is we're not reading the entire book. Man, you guys got to pick this up. There are some spiritual sides to this where he puts some verses from the Bible, which are pretty cool because they connect. But um, he talks about how our identity is formed, and he talks about five areas, and I don't know if we'll pause on all these, but five areas that are the architecture of our identities, our past, uh, your past, your people, your personality, your purpose, and your priorities. Those are things that are going to build your um, identity, your past, you know, what are some of the things that people have taught you? What are, who have you hung out with? Your people again. Well, your, yeah. again, this would be a great thing for you to spend some time with you were saying 30, 45 minutes and go through and really, you know, write down your past, your people, your personality, like what makes you mm -hmm. the leader that you are? How do yeah. you see yourself? Like you talk about wanting, like becoming a confident leader and knowing who you are as a leader. This right here will get you there. So if you heard at the end, your past, your people, your personality, and when, and then it says your purpose and priorities. When you go back to your purpose, if you struggle with that, then maybe that's where you're missing the mark and you're upset and you're angry all the time because you're not doing something that you're passionate about. So, well, and I'm going to tell you what your priorities that when you go through, you have to take an honest evaluation of your priorities. Oh yeah. Because I think most people have their priority, their like ideal priorities, mm -hmm. what looks good on paper what looks pretty hanging on a wall in your house, but really when it comes down to it, you know, what are your priorities? And that's where it's really good to kind of go through your values. Yeah. What is it that you value mm -hmm. overall? Yeah, so if you're a leader and you're secure in your identity, how many more people are gonna follow you? But if you're insecure and you're faking it, people are probably, I mean, I think, I would think that turnover in that company is gonna be high. People are unhappy, people are on the wrong seat of the bus, and it's not a good place to influence. So right now he's talking about influence and identity and those two things are key to leadership.
Well, I'm but you may, but again, you're not the leader, but you're you are leading. You may not know that you're leading. What you were talking about earlier, um, the like people use manipulation or influence. I think there. I don't think there's a direct tie between a secure leader and an insecure leader. And the more secure you are, the more that you totally. use influence. I totally and agree. I think the more as as you can identify your personal identity, the more secure that you become, the more that you can serve other people, mm -hmm. the more secure that you become. I think it's the new younger, I don't, not young as an age, but young as in um, newer to leadership. New leadership that yeah. Sometimes that, and that uh, most of the time, that's the kind of leadership that has been passed down to you. You know, um, I think about coaches and how a lot of young men, their leaders in their lives are coaches. Yeah. And from my humble experience, many of the coaches use manipulation. Yeah. There are fewer coaches that know how to use influence and know mm -hmm. how to use relationship. Yeah. And where I've seen a huge gap in it, and then you get these young men in the workplace and in the, the field, and they're trying to use those same techniques that they've learned from these old school coaches. Yeah. And I've seen that so many times. And it just reminds me, you know, know who you are because yeah. you don't know who you're influencing. Exactly. And if you are like an owner or a leader of an organization, we said this, and I, I mean, I think this is where you put your, put your money where your mouth is, is to go, I'm developing people that I don't want to stay here. I want them to leave and go experience life on their own and have what I taught them here and help them, have that help them and boost them where they want to go start their own company too some people may stay but what are they learning under your leadership that in the yeah i don't know because as a leader a a i as a leader i want to lead you yes. to be the best version of yourself yeah. not for what you can do for the company That's and influence. if the company benefits from that great, great. But at the same time, it, it is going to benefit from mm -hmm. that's going to fit greatly because you are doing yeah. your you're leading in your sweet spot. And at some point, you're right. You're probably going to move on. Your employees are probably going to move on. But the impact that you've had in them, the influence that you've had in them mm -hmm. is priceless. Yeah, it's a legacy. That's what they, you leave behind that people will never forget. So, um, so, so far, we've covered two chapters. The last section in this or the last chapter in this section is called Re Reclaim Kibosh. I don't want to explain all this. It was so crazy the way he explains this. This is the part where I said, you know, I want to make sure they understand that if you pick up this book, there is a spiritual side to it. It's funny because he talks about Seinfeld. But uh, we started with influence and identity and how to face our leadership. And now he ends with the first se first section with the kibosh, but he's talking about ambition. Yes. Ambition, 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 and what it's built inside of us. Well, and one of the very first sentences in this chapter, it says, the why of leadership is the engine that drives your leadership train. Yes. Yes. We've, how many times have we the said why. that? You yep. have to know your why. Yep. Good and, gracious. And understanding we could have wrote why, this book. I know. Understanding your why is part of who you are. Identity influence, right? Um, so I want to stop for a second. I usually don't do this, but I want to stop with this ambition thing and 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 a note regarding, and I'm gonna use quotations, believers, right? Because this, there is a part of believers here. Um, but I wanna stop right here because this is the thing that that makes me come unglued with people that attend, uh, you know, church that say ambition is bad. Oh, I was like, I cannot wait to hear what you're about to say. Because here's, what, talk about here's, what, here's yes. what pisses me off is that there are so many people that are negative influence in this world and have a negative impact but yet we stand by with our influence and our freaking leadership and it we're great but we we cower down because we say i can't leave because i'm a believer and i think that that's bad that i have this no it's the were, opposite you were freaking given freedom in this world to go freaking live your life out so why don't you go lead with excellence so that you can be an impact in this world to be a light and I hate, I hate, hate's a strong word, but I hate when people get this negative connotation of ambition and they cower and you never reach your potential in life because you freaking were raised to say ambition was bad. You were built with ambition. So leverage that in a positive way. Yes, there's a dichotomy, a balance. But if you don't lead correctly, that's gonna drown you and you're gonna you're gonna stay. Well, I hope yeah. that as a believer that you can see that leading from the right ambition 
that the impact that you can make as a leader and as a believer mm -hmm. for God is greatly multiplied because totally. that that if you're using influence, if you're, yeah. if you're doing it the right way, people want to know, wow, mm -hmm. how are they different? What is it that's different about them? Yeah. Where does that come from? Yeah. You know, ambition is not bad. God puts that in us. He yeah. puts that ambition and inside us. And he talks us. about that. And I don't want to spend a lot of time. And you, that's what we're saying yes. is there's a lot of that in this book. But man, freaking drown out the noise and be the best person that you can be. And I guarantee you that you're going to be used to the best ability if, you, if you're a believer. Well, and, we, we said this at the beginning of the podcast, but I want to say it again, is that you can still get, if you're not a believer, that is okay. Read yeah, this totally. book. You can still get so much out of it. I don't want anybody to not pick up this book, yeah, exactly. you know, because of that. Thank you. Um, I think that, uh, I think that, um, yeah, I never want it to be about that. It's just, it, it's, you can learn so many different things from here. So one of the things he said about ambition here is this, he says this, and you, you said this, we all have ambition inside us. Don't try to deny it. What you do with ambition will make all the difference in your ability to lead when you're not in charge. Ambition doesn't wait for authority to show up. Ambition doesn't magically begin when you're, when you're placed in charge. Again, it is built inside of you to make a difference. Leverage that ambition, harness it, and go, I'm going to go make an impact in the world. And you don't have, a, have to have this, um, this, this badge of leader or this, again, title you have it within you and you're leading people, whether that's your family or the people that you're around. So, um, well, and yeah. I think we, you kind of, one of the things you said that I liked is you said people tend to like squash their ambition mm -hmm. because they are, they've been like conditioned that that's not right. Mm -hmm. I think whether it has to do with it being because you're a believer or not, I think people all the time squash their ambition because of journeys they've had on their leadership road. Yep. They've had an insecure leader. So it when, affects your identity. It affects your identity. And so it changes who you think you're supposed to be. Yep. And so you do, you start pressing it down because yep. you're like, oh, well, maybe I'm not supposed to do that because that makes the people around me mm -hmm. feel insecure, which happens like we said earlier in with insecure leaders or younger leaders. Don't let an insecure leader make you have an identity identity crisis because Preach. of the fact that yeah because you have that's why i made for more so well, you were made for more so leverage that ambition your identity and influence and harness that and go this is what i need to lead with and push forward but you don't have to be the one in charge but in chat this is what he talks about the, the whole the whole like the whole identity influence. thing is if you know who you are, don't let anybody tell you what kind of leader you are. Mm -hmm. You determine what kind of leader you are. Yeah. Let the right voices speak into your life, and then you lead from that place, yeah. not from what the, the voices that you should not be listening to. Those are often the ones we hear yeah. over and over. So you know what just popped in my head that I need to say? I think, so we're talking about identity, influence, and, um, and ambition. I need I need us to take an honest assessment oh, of what go. of what we put on social media. Like me personally, any of us, you like, like no, no, no. Okay. the people that are listening right now. If you're the most negative person on social uh, media, okay. that that you're gonna keep going. that you're gonna keep. Like, let's say there's a fear of the electricity turning off here in Texas, and you're just continuing that down. Again, what are you doing with your influence? Are you trying to help people? Are you putting fear in people? Are you going? I'm gonna free the people's minds by going man, accomplish this, do this, you can do this. What are you doing with your influence? And if you go, social media is just social media, it's not an influence, people are looking at you. Well, here we go with self-reflection because if that, those are the kinds of things that you're posting. What you're doing is you're trying to find somebody to identify with you. You're trying to find value in other people's... Opinions, yes. yes. So and that's I, not good. Don't do that. Yeah. No. The number of likes. Here we go. Yeah. We, don't know what, we don't know who we are. Yep. If that's what we're going for. Yeah. And I constantly have to be reminded by you guys about that. Not the social media thing, but, but to believe are. in who I am. I mean, it's the same thing Jay said, right? I, yeah, I agree. I, so. I agree with that. But I, I think it just goes to show you that no matter how good of a leader you are, that that identity thing is something that we wrestle with because of the voices, because of our past, and because of the voices that we who you, listen to. To, who yeah. you listen to. And you have to learn how to tune out the right voices and how mm -hmm. to hear the, the voices that are moving you to the place that you are supposed to be. Yeah, so if you're tuning people out, 
go find people to tune in, which is like, again, podcasts, books, a new group of friends. The made for more community, but love to cheer you on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I put this, do you have any more notes about ambition? I just think ambition is built inside of all of us. And the reason I didn't put much is because he really writes a lot about the way God made you. Um, and I want people to go read the book. I put in the end, ambition is, it, here is the most important question we must ask. Here's the most important question we must ask ourselves about ambition. Um, and I think it will determine what you do. And, and here's the here's here's the question is, are you in this for yourself? Or are you in this for others? Meaning, are you leveraging your ambition for yourself or for others? And I said this, if you're in, in this for you, if you're in this for you, it goes with what we started with. If you're in this for you and you use your ambition for yourself, guess what? It means you're using manipulation. It means you'll eventually and gradually get people to do what you want them to do and your ambition is a false sense of ambition. And you know what I think about is, and when they leave your your circle, they are going to lo- leave worse off yep. from you being their leader than if you use influence and impact, then they will be better off when you're yep. a leader. And I know, I mean, that's always my goal is for people to leave with more value. I want to add people, add value to their life and to their like their confidence and you know everything about them i want them to feel like when i walk away from her i feel better about myself yeah and add value you don't have to be the leader to be you don't have to be in charge is what he's saying to make people feel that way right so the ambition question was is it for you and i told you if it's for you it's in manipulation if it's for others it means that you're influencing people and i put this influence leads leadership it means that you're leading others investing in others and you're watching others take you further because you're taking them further so um, I think they're buying into what, who you are. And if you're buying into who you are, they buy into who they are. It's this whole circle that everything starts to succeed. And it's not about a product. It's not about an uh, organization. It's about the team. And they go, hey, we're accomplishing this together. We're all getting better. We're all growing. We're all influencing. We're all finding this identity and, and believing who we are. And then we're all using ambition to move forward. Um, and again, it's it's people that aren't in charge that are that, that, that every one of us can do this. You don't have to be in charge. No, you just have to know who you are. Yeah. And your identity as a leader. And understand that you have influence. Yes. Regardless of where you stand on the on the totem pole of a we organization. Got this. We got this. So yeah, that's that was chapter one. I mean section, section one, one. Three chapters. Um, next next week we're gonna cover the next, I think, four chapters, and, there, and and do you know what the next uh, section is called? As we went through this, I know we've got some action steps, but you know, it, as we went through the podcast, we talked several times. We talked about things that you can, you know, stop and do some self evaluation on, um, and really focus on, you know, who you're becoming. And I love that, you know, one thing that's really important to you is write it down. Totally. Don't just think it. Don't just write it down mm-hmm. and I would say walk away from it come back to it yeah. reread it and um, who are you listening to you know go yeah. through those things that we've talked about and really start to create your leadership identity yeah you're right so section one at the end was all about understanding our challenge right next week is going to be the four behaviors yeah so we'll talk about four behaviors next time but like Adina said tonight's action steps Guys, I'm asking you, would you please write down these things? It, I want to make sure that, like she said, write them down. And the two action steps, like she was saying, the first one I said was, who are you focus on? Who are you focusing on becoming? This week, write down who it is that you want to become. Who is important? Because it's how you lead. You lead out who you are. So the first one is who you focus on becoming. Write those things down. And when you say, if you need more help on that, let's break it down. Basically, who do you want to be? What kind of leader do you want to be? As in who? I want to be honest. I want to be uh, indirect. I want to be um, indirect as in I want to influence someone. Uh, what else? How, who else do you want to be as a leader? I want to be a servant leader. There you go. I want to add value to people. And then when you I s- want to bring out their yes. potential. Yes. So when you say I want to add value, break that down even more. Mm-hmm. How? I want to give them a book every week, every month. Uh, I want to be 
honest, okay? So they're gonna be honest even when it's tough. And they break well, those yeah, things down. Yes, and go, for this sure. Is who I and be. like that for in that example I think about too is it, you know, I'm not going to gossip. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say negative yeah, break things. Those things down. That, you yes. know, these are the, these are the practical steps to mm -hmm. how you add value to yeah. somebody. And if you say I wanna be a leader who's growing, that's the most simple to me, I love that because you have the mentality of I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna watch things. I'm gonna go. This is. I need to add value to my life so I can add value to other people. So number one, who are you focus on becoming? Number two, it's what Adina said. Who are you listening to? Who's in the mix of your of your headphones that you need to turn up the volume, turn down? Who are you listening to that needs to be turned down or turned up? So, but the step is don't just hear us talking about this. Take some self reflection time. Write it down. Turn your phone off. Do these things. Um, so yeah, those are the action steps. I think those are some pretty good ones. Yeah, it's crazy to be back. Um, it's it wasn't even it was just a week. I mean, and we did two episodes with Jay, but uh, it's good to be back. I mean, we we reached like a, like Etiana said, we're, we we were we crossed 2,200, 2,200 uh, downloads, um, and man, it just again. It's having confidence and understanding that our identity as the Made For More community, we're making a difference. We just gotta keep it up and continue to grow. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for downloading. Thanks for just following us on social media. Um, I think the community on social media is getting better and it's cool to see people's responses. Um, I will tell you this, this is a funny story. Um, so I took John, J JDB, John Douchebag, coming to Never Abrams to, to lunch with someone that listens to our podcast. So we're sitting at lunch, and this guy doesn't know that this is John, the coming to Never Nader, Douchebag Evans. And so we're sitting there, and towards the end of our lunch, I go, Oh, I said, Hey, man, this is actually the John we talk about on the, <laughs> on the podcast. And he goes, Oh, you're the douchebag? <laughs> and John was like, That's me. He goes, Did That's I disappoint? <laughs> so what's funny is we built this character of John the common denominator douchebag Evans and at some point we'll have him on but he and he's just, so not a douchebag douche he just said I'm going to disappoint people I'm like no bro he has so much to offer he's such a good friend um and man he's such a relational leader if there's anybody that you want to like learn from as far as uh relational leading he he's, he's really one. really good at it um I finally see the fly or nap that's on the bottle stay I can't, focused Marta stay focused um, Anyways, guys, thank you again for being a part of this. Thanks for-, for Find just, us on social media if you haven't already. Yes, and I think the biggest ask that I would ask this week is if you go to iTunes and you hit that it's a, you know, you can rate us. I don't care if it's one star or five star. Let's just ask for a five star rating. Okay, I mean, if you don't mind. ask for what we want. But here's what I'd ask you to do a step further. Leave a review, like tell us what you think because what that's doing is it's helping us and really podcasts are starting to, I mean, I know there's been a lot of podcasts, a lot of people making, but the ones that stick around are, um, are making an impact. And I got an email from Buzzsprout not too long ago, the people that kind of produce our, our podcast. And they, what was interesting is the email was informative, but it said most people don't make it past 25 because you, I guess they have a false sense of identity to go, I want this to hurry up and be successful when we're just trying to create content mm -hmm. for leaders and hopefully someone learns something about this. If not, well then the 2100 downloads is a false. Uh, People are learning guys. stuff. So anyways, thanks for sticking thank you guys with us, for guys. sticking with us. So leave us a review and we say this every week and I want to make sure that you understand that we gotta believe this. Remember that you exist for more. You're here to offer more. Don't ever give up. Every single one of us was made for more. We'll see you guys later. Bye guys. It's beginning to be easier. And sometimes I'm like, maybe we should just stop at 30 minutes. Oh, great. It didn't record. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what oh, ever. we're still on yeah. over there. Uh, <laughs> I was like, whatever. YouTube, what's up? Uh, hey, we're going to try to grow our YouTube at some point, like different videos. Um, so, we appreciate you guys watching. All right. Talk to y'all later.